Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Abby Teleria, coming to you live from Melissa Data's headquarters in Rancho Santa Margarita, California. Our webinar today is Win Huge, Five Steps to Better Campaigns Using Data Enhancements. Joining me today is our Vice President of Data Services, Chris Rowe, and Patrick Bain, our Data Quality Analyst. They'll offer up unique tips and tricks to get out the vote. We'll have a Q&A session at the end of the demo, so any questions you have, feel free to type them in anytime during the webinar. Also, this webinar will be recorded, so if you miss anything or want to forward to someone, you'll be able to do so. Um, we have a lot to cover, so we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to hand over the controls to Patrick. Hold on. Thank you, Abby, uh, and good morning or afternoon to all of those uh, attending. Um, one second here. While Abby pulls up the slides for us. Okay, thank you, Abby. Um, so good morning or, or, and good afternoon to all of you attending. I appreciate uh, you taking your time out of the day to uh, stop and listen to us uh, and our presentation here. Um, I am Patrick Bain. I'm a data quality analyst with Melissa Data and, and have worked in this role uh, for a number of years. And my counterpart is Chris Rowe, who uh, Abby mentioned is the Vice President of Data Services. Uh, so today we're going to tag team this and, and give you our thoughts on winning big. So, so we are all here for better campaigns. How do we do that? It is obvious that it's in the data. Whether you have your own database or spreadsheet of individuals that are sympathetic to your cause, or whether you are looking to expand your reach with additional contact lists, we can use that to help target your constituents. Um, but what I want to focus, Chris is going to talk about how to do, uh, if you already have your list by appending data points such as demographics and social media handles to your list. But what I'm going to focus on right now is getting that list of individuals. Um, so we have three main data sets that we can draw from to target constituents or, or people that are sympathetic towards your cause. Um, now which one you use is going to be based on the purpose of your campaign. You are who you are targeting, and who are you looking uh, to get, uh, how, or who you're looking to get back data points from. Um, so, for instance, for the consumer list, we can pull back uh, um, occupation, uh, income, presence of children, uh, how many uh, generations live in the household, um, or political lists, which give if they have voted in the past, um, or even occupant list, which um, are, are basically every house in the neighborhood. So we'll go through those in more detail as we as we step through the slides. Now, the, this data is more necessary than ever. Uh, I do want to mention this. And according to the Pew Research poll uh, from data in 2014, a full 39% of Americans identify as independents. This is the highest percentage of independents in more than 75 years of public opinion polling. So we need to definitely leverage the demographics and other interests, uh, as well as the voting record, to, to target individuals that don't necessarily always come out to vote, or maybe uh, they're, um, they don't know about certain issues uh, at hand. So how do we know who to target? It's demographics. With the political data, we can tell whether or not a person is affiliated with a political party, whether they voted, or whether they have donated to political causes such as uh, charities that are, are religious or, or uh, that support animals or other things like that. So this becomes very useful to us when we're looking out uh, to reach out to our core supporters. We can essentially micro-target, pay attention to that word, uh, individuals and draw up support for donations for our causes. Uh, this is something that President Obama and his de team did so well that helped propel him to victory in 2008 and 2012. They were essentially able to figure out the exact groups that needed that they needed to target and craft a message that would resonate with those particular groups. So for instance, you might want to reach out to potential supporters to vote. 
uh, we can pull out individuals that did not vote that have donated to charities such as a religious organization or a veterans organization and craft a message that is tailored towards their views or their needs to help compel them to vote. Or maybe, uh, for instance, you might be a congressional representative that needs help in campaign financing. So we could reach out to active Republican voters or a support who supported veterans uh, that are in a high income bracket and ask for donations. Or maybe we should, uh, using that data set that you can get from Melissa Data, we could tailor the letter that we send out to people with preset dollar amounts uh, based on the individual's income to generate more money for our campaign. So you see that this is very powerful using this data uh, to transform your campaign based on these data points that we can give you. So now that we have talked a little bit about our political uh, uh, list, let's move on to our consumer list. Now at first glance, uh, I was mentioning uh, you know, demographic data points in, in this political list, which there are, but if we need to more specifically uh, tailor our campaign towards uh, data points that aren't in our uh, demographics or, or in our political mailing list, we can use this consumer mailing list. So this has things such as profession, language, generations in the household, as I've mentioned before, number of children, uh, whether the uh, person supports environmentalist causes, um, so we can use that for those reasons. So, for example, just this week in Illinois, uh, representatives there wanted to tax people based on miles driven per year in their car because of the rise in popularity of electric vehicles. So this translated to less revenue for infrastructure, basically. So maybe you're a representative against the issue you and you want to target families with many children or generations living in a household as they would be more uh, more opposed to increased taxes uh, and, and aren't we all right but uh, another area you know another example might be maybe you're trying to introduce a bill that is being introduced that would allow companies to charge a monthly hookup fee for solar panels uh, on the grid so to drum up support against the bill one could target individuals that have um, environmental leanings because we want to support the solar initiative and be more environmental. Um, so you can see quickly and easily based on our list you can target certain segments uh, of the population and drum up support. Now what if for instance you just want to mail to everyone in certain zip codes or certain neighborhoods or certain cities? Well we can do that too and that's what the saturation list. Where this differs from the consumer or the voter list is that it has a 90% coverage. Uh, so it basically covers almost every household in the neighborhood. Um, and, and what this allows you to do is when you cover every household in the neighborhood you can qualify for postal discounts. Um, so it's it's around seven to nine cents off standard mail rates, and for nonprofits, that's around ten to twelve cents uh, per piece uh, per mail piece uh, in mailing costs. So you can blanket neighborhoods and and get those reduced rates. Um, so this these are very cheap and easy ways to get out to drum up support for your cause. To to um, and, and to find people that that will help you with your campaign or, or your charity or, or whatever you're looking to do. Um, now, as you have seen today, we we can leverage uh, the data to capture the individual individuality of each voter, engage potential interests and levels of support, and therefore win huge at your campaigns. Um, so if you anyone is interested in any of these lists that I've talked about today, please feel free to visit us on our website, www.melissadata.com forward slash list dash political for the political list. Uh, the same goes for consumer or occupant, list dash consumer for the consumer list or list dash occupant for the occupant list. Now, some of you might be saying, I don't know what list I need. Well, we deal with this day in and day out, so feel free to reach out to us and we can find the list that uh, is tailored for your needs and, and uh, accomplishes your goal. And together we can help 
build a better campaign for you. So now I'm going to hand it over to my counterpart, Chris Rowe, that will explain once we, if we have the data or once we get the data, maybe we want other data points. And, and he can start uh, explaining about that. Thank you for your time today. And, and, and as always, feel free to reach out to me. My name is Patrick Bain. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I'm going to pass over the presentation to Chris. Chris? Hello, my name is Chris Rowe. I'm a Vice President of Data Services at Melissa Data. I've worked here for uh, roughly uh, 14 years and uh, have worked um, uh, with various uh, political campaigns as uh, PACs as well as uh, campaign managers themselves. Um, and I want to explain, um, once you get your list, uh, what are other things that you can do to improve it? Okay, maximize spend and deliverability. Um, you have your voter list and you are ready to start marketing. Before you do anything, you should definitely clean this list. We don't know where it's been. If the supplier of the voter list said the list has been processed through NCOA link, then ask how long. If you've had the list for a while, or the provider of the list is unsure, just process it through NCOA link. It's a pretty inexpensive process to gain the most current and corrected information. Please pay attention to how the list was coded. NCOA link is not a miracle product that makes everything perfect on the back end. You have to decipher which records you want to deliver to and which ones you don't uh, based on the codes provided. If your voter file arrived with phones and emails, I would try to get a verification process before you proceed um, in, with either campaign. Despite what the image shows, the latex gloves are absolutely not a requirement to perform these data cleaning services. Um, also, don't abandon more traditional political marketing methods. We have some exciting new ways to get in front of people, and perhaps you are already familiar with them, but we don't want to abandon mail. In fact, the mailbox is at its lowest amount of mail competition ever, averaging two pieces of mail per day. At the very least, it's going to be a cost-efficient way to reinforce your newer channels, and to some demographics, this might be the most receptive way for them to receive information about your campaign. Micro-targeting the best potential voters. Uh, consumer demographics, when execu executed correctly, can help a candidate exhibit specific goals and strategies to help solve specific problems nationally or locally. This creates a personal touch between the candidate and the voter. The politician does need to have actual ideas or at least good fake ones to properly optimize this data. Broad and powerful messages are good too, but the more specific you get, the more real you get to the person, and you're just not a name on the ballot. We, we personally started working with the Obama, Obama campaign in late 2007. And even though I can't reveal the specifics of the demographic information they asked for, let me just say I received the request and I knew what the strategy was, and it was pretty amazing to see. Um, we also worked with Ron Paul in this capacity as well. Um, before that particular day with Obama, I had not had a single candidate go that deep into demographic data. Um, he was well behind in initial polling before this approach. Even though demographics isn't the sole reason for the campaign's performance, it had an extremely important role. Since then, we've had several other candidates and uh, super PACs come through with demographic requests, but not as many as you would think. This is still a progressive approach. Um, some valuable traits of a candidate come out when you micro-target your voters with specific messages. Um, it illustrates community involvement. Um, it allows you to communicate a particular message clearly, and it assists in understanding the constituents' needs. Even though I'm using a national example in the graphic that most of us are familiar with, this can really dial to more local levels. It doesn't have to be national news to be important to the voter. 
Maybe some new boat restriction happened at a local lake in your district and you have a better solution to the issue. Append boat owners, boat renters to your list and broadcast your solution via mail, phone, or email. Expand your reach. Political telemarketing campaigns have existed for a long time and they can still be effective despite less and less people having landlines. It is still another important bolt in the quiver and should not be ignored. I have been asked a lot about cell phones. Now there are still restrictions with some of this marketing because in the United States, the caller and the receiver are subject to a charge. In cases of traditional landline marketing, the charges are on the caller only. Also, major cell phone providers have not released their data publicly. So the only data available is self-report information, which can be inconsistent and inaccurate at times. Boba Fett and Mickey Mouse have a lot of burner phones according to the data collected. This makes sense for Boba, but Mickey should really be more responsible. Now, because of this lack of quality information in the mobile phone world, you may have come across some large scale data gathering of recent. Google and Yahoo think you can't recover your stolen email address without a cell phone number. Not really, they don't actually think that, but by placing that extra screen in front of your face several times a day, they might get you to cave, and many have. Some retail stores are asking for cell phone numbers as well. It's basically a mad scramble to get more data and better data in that realm. Now with recent polling, not surprisingly, the most annoying way to market to a person and make the vast majority of them upset is to hit them up on their cell phone or text them. So even if the candidate has stronger data in this regard, they are still rightfully reluctant to market in this manner. So how will you reach a person that just has a cell phone but take a softer approach than a call or text? Well, smartphones have gained in popularity and now represent the majority of mobile phone users. With premium email pen, you can reach their best email and essentially land on their cell phones in a much less invasive but effective manner. I have personally tested uh, 34 email append providers and potential royalty partners since 2002. Of those 34, only six passed the quality deliverability test. There are 12 companies whose sole purpose in the world was to provide email append and 11 of them failed miserably. I started to learn more and more about the append process and discovered the more responsible approach was about a two week turnaround time with a can spam uh, compliance and permission pass and the ability to opt out. The 24 hour or less options failed the most. A lot of those guys offered refunds for bounces, but that's not okay. You're running the risk of being blacklisted and that can have crippling effects on your business. Companies that perform e-blasts also have very little or no tolerance for bounces. If you aren't 95% deliverable or better, you're opening yourself up to problems. Energize young voters by tapping into social media. Um, in 2002, I was, it was pretty early here, but when I first started investigating email append as a service, many marketers and political campaigns were intimidated, intimidated by the new method. Those who got on the bandwagon early cashed in and to this day is still very effective. Email is still underutilized politically in my opinion, but social media is very new, especially the ability to append handles. I'm very confident this will progress in a similar fashion as email append. Political campaigns are progressive in their thinking, will jump on it early, and eventually will become just the standard in terms of marketing to potential voters. Now you can't target voters using social media without being prepared first. You need to have handles yourself. You need a strong web page that attempts to get more information as well as political contributions. Also express some of your strongest and most appealing traits and stances on the website as well. Once you think you've created an appealing social media presence yourself, now you can start recruiting followers. It'll be a combination of using social media and also pending handles to the voters so you can get in front of them more often.
Now, I know we've used Obama as an example in quite a few of these, but um, this works for both parties. It's equally effective uh, for their methods. But this is just kind of a hardcore example of, of what we've seen. And here are some of the results from the 2012 presidential election in terms of social media scores, which are a combination of likes and followers. Other campaigns must also not ignore this channel. From city officials, district representatives, to senators can all make a massive progress using social media. And we also have um, premium phone append available uh, through Missa Data. This is uh, landline um, information. We do have cell phone information as well, but uh, like I had mentioned earlier, I would uh, be very um, conservative with that usage. Um, we have premium email append. Um, this is uh, through tons of research. We we're interested most in retention, which is why we use only the highest quality. Um, and it's just been fantastic over the years. And when we first started, probably represented 1% of our business, and uh, now it's about half. And uh, social media append is also now available. This is a brand new product. Um, you'll probably start to see more uh, companies offer it as well, um, but it's nice to be early on the bandwagon for, for a product. Thank you, Chris. Um, we're going to go into our Q&A session right now. Um, so if you have any questions, please type them in. Okay. We're just waiting for a few more. Okay, the first question is, how do you know they are the best emails? Now, that's a very good question um, because there's plenty of companies out there uh, when they have an email append uh, service, um, they're just kind of interested in what's deliverable. Um, one of our sources, our prime sources, actually has what I call a rotating record. So uh, what they do is they base it off of behavior patterns um, from their particular uh, record. So if a record has six emails, um, that highest priority email can actually change over the years uh, based on the customer's activity. So if they use Expedia to um, get a hotel and a car uh, three months ago, and they use a Gmail account for that, it might leapfrog to the front uh, to be their most important email. Now, we also have um, some indicators uh, that tag email with social media. And a lot of people that have social media um, usually use their best email. Um, it's not all cases, but we've noticed a lot of people use uh, a high quality email source for social media. So we have connectors on that as well. Okay, um, another question is, can we get, uh, can I or we get contributors to campaigns? So you're wanting to know what campaigns or, or see who they've contributed to? Is that the question? Um, we can tell in our data um, what causes they've uh, donated to or if they've even contributed to uh, Democrats or Republicans or anything like that. As for individuals, uh, I would have to check on that. Um, but we do have a lot of uh, data points in there based on who or what they are donating to. Um, OK, um, another question. Thank you, Patrick. Will we be able to receive a copy of the slide deck? Um, I can answer that question. I will send you a link to this presentation and I will include um, the presentation uh, in that email. You should receive that tomorrow. Some more questions? I see them streaming in.
Okay, we have another question. Um, how soon can I get the list if I order? Uh, so the list turnaround time, I, it's it's fairly quick. Um, probably within that day, you can get the list back. I, um, so it, it just takes a matter of figuring out the query and, and querying our, our data set to get you that list that you're needing. So. Um, another question we have is, for mail saturation, can we use political district lines rather than city, town, or zip code? The saturation service, you can use, um, so you can segment it by uh, zip, radius, county, city, PO box, rule routes, apartments, and businesses. The we might be able to do like um, uh, we we might be able to do that. Um, we'll probably reach out to us offline and, and we can look into that. Okay. Another question is, um, what about carrier routes? Carrier routes are in in uh, all of this data. So with whether you're getting saturation or the consumer list or or the political list, we can add carrier routes to all of that. And um, we have another question. Uh, so I end up uh, mailing to people not in our district. Um, you can actually expand the district coverage. So um, you can pull the carrier routes um, by district um, uh, or include more zip codes beyond what district you have. Another question we have is, can you tell how long the resident lives at that address? Absolutely. That is in the, our demographic data, and I believe that is exposed in our political list as well, but that is in there. We can tell how long they've been there, if they own or rent, um, uh, mortgage information, all of that sort of information. Um, okay, another. How much voter data do you have? Do you have election turnout history? So there is a history in the, the table. Like we can tell if they have voted in the past. Uh, we can tell what party they're affiliated with. Um, I would say uh, in, there's about 200 million records in the demographics data. Um, I believe the political data set, um, because obviously not everyone's going to have a, a party affiliation. I believe it has around the same amount of records in it, um, around 200 million. So. All right, thank you, Patrick. Another question we have is, what is the append rate of social media? Um, I'll take that one. Um, the append rate, when uh, you combine it uh, with premium email pen, we're getting anywhere from 40 to 55%, which is quite high. Um, sometimes customers will come in with emails um, on their voter list already, uh, we're still getting 30% or higher on those. So um, we actually have a lot of good information and good connectivity there. Um, another question is, can we look up people, um, can we look up by people who voted in specific elections? I, off the top of my head, I don't believe that we can. Um, uh, just from what I know about the data set, we don't have that information. Um, but that might be something we can get because it's obviously compiled from somewhere. Um, so we um, definitely, if you want that, reach out to us after this webinar and, and we can look into that. Okay, um, we have one, one more question here. Can you help with a customized website? for a campaign? Um, I'll take that one. Uh, we can, we could work with somebody in an advisory role, um, but we actually don't build websites. Um, but we could definitely, uh, you know, provide them uh, with probably professional services actually to um, give them some advice on uh, how to build their website. Okay, another question is, do you have a 
can't pronounce that, API synchronous? Uh, uh, an, uh, an API. So you're wanting to generate lists based on an API call uh, uh, through uh, the web. We do have APIs um, specifically for the consumer data and the saturation data, um, which take into various data points such as zip, uh, or address, or city, or any of those fields, and you can slice and dice the data with different filters um, and, and generate the file that you're needing uh, as an API basis. So we have a lot of uh, customers that will integrate these into websites um, and, and allow uh, people to come in for mailings and, and, and generate mailing based off the list that is brought back from our web service. Uh, and then we have another question. Uh, do you have an email append API? Um, based on how we process the custom method to give um, uh, proper opt-out procedures and to be CAN-SPAM compliant, it's not available via API just because it would be an instantaneous database return and it would not go through the proper processes to give you the highest quality data. Okay, I'll give it one more second for one more question. Uh, okay, uh, we have another uh, last question we have is um, an idea of pricing per record or field. Yeah, so f uh, from my side, from the list side, um, for the saturation service, the cost per lead can be as low as one cent a lead. Um, as for the other ones, um, it, it's a little bit, it, it's still cheap, but it's, it's a little bit more than one cent, I believe, per record for some of the other ones. And it also depends on what fields that you're trying to append as well. Um, data fields. So, yeah, and we can uh, get back uh, with specific quotes and everything, just so everything yes. is formal. All right. Um, it looks like that's all the time we have right now. Um, if you submitted a question that did not get answered, um, you can contact Chris or Patrick via email or phone. Um, their email address is chris at melissadata dot com or patrick at melissadata dot com. Um, I will be sending you a link to a recording to this webinar tomorrow morning. So please be on the lookout. Thank you again and have a great day. See you next time.